Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Test Agent Registration Appliance Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. In this example, we have a few different devices. We have two test agents, that is TA1 and TA2. And then we have the control center. And those test agents are connected to a service provider network through edge routers, as you can see, and then using the ETH1 interface. And then using the ETH0 interface, they connect into the management network, which allows them to communicate with the Paragon Active Assurance Control Center. All right, with that being said, let's look at the criteria for this example. Uh, we have TA1 and TA2. As we talked about, those are test agents, and we need to register both test agent appliances with the control center. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so here is the Paragon Active Assurance web interface, and let's go ahead and log in. And as you can see here, we are in the Paragon Active Assurance web interface, and we are in the dashboard workspace. And so let's hover over the ribbon on the left and select the test agents workspace. And just wanted to show you here that we have no test agents. And so what we can do here is we can download a test agent, select that link, and we have some options. We have the test agent application, which would be installed on a already running server or host. And then we have the test agent appliance. And this is what we're interested in. We have a bunch of different images we can use, and we'll be using the OVA file in our example today. And actually, I've already deployed these, but I did want to show you where you can download this. So let's go ahead and close that and then jump to the console connection for TA1. All right, so here is the console connection for TA1. The default password and username is shown on screen, so let's just go ahead and use that admin admin. And of course, if you have this in a production environment, you'll want to change that. And so, okay, so we're presented with a few different options here. We can look at the system status, we can register, uh, configuration management, things like that. We got some utilities, but the register option sounds like this is what we need to do because we need to register this, right? Let's select that. And immediately we're presented with an error message. And the reason behind that is because we don't have any interfaces configured. Recall from the topology that ETH0 is the interface that is on the management network. And so we need to configure that first before we can register TA1. So let's go ahead and select configure management. And we have two interfaces, ETH0 and ETH1. We want to configure ETH0. And interface speed, we can just leave that auto. We're not gonna be doing anything with VLANs on this interface. And we can leave the MTU value at its default value just by selecting okay. And then nothing with 801.2x authentication on the management interface here. And here we are asked to configure the IPv4 address. We're going to select static. You could use DHCP if you need to, but here let's go ahead and select static. And we need to enter some IP information. So let's go ahead, 172.25.11.12. And the mask of slash 24 is good, and we need to configure the gateway. And then we need to configure a DNS. And so let's click OK there. And we don't need to configure IPv6 with this. And we don't need to enable support for IPv6 NTP. And we can specify the NTP server it gives you the default of time.google.com. In our scenario, that works fine. And then we get a summary of what we did. And we can see here the IP address, gateway, things like that. And so if everything looks good, which it does, let's go ahead and select yes. And it's going to configure the interface there. So let's look at the interface status. And you can see here that we have Ethernet 0 configured. Perfect. But we don't have Ethernet 1 or ETH1 configured. So let's, let's go ahead and configure that real quick. Let's go to Configure Management, ETH1, Auto. We'll just go through the defaults. Uh, set a static address. We'll set the gateway as well. Recall that this is the interface that is pointing towards that edge router that then connects into the service provider network. And we'll just run through the rest of the defaults. 
And that looks good, right? Okay, we'll add that. And let's look at the interface status again. And, oh, this is not what we want. We see Ethernet 0 is not configured now. That seems like kind of a problem, right? Uh, Ethernet 1 is configured, but Ethernet 0 is not configured. So, And the reason behind that is in the console, you are configuring the management interface, as it suggests with the option of configure management. And so you're only configuring one interface here. To configure the other interface that we have set up, which is ETH1, we need to do that through the control center web interface. So let's go back and just configure Ethernet zero again, get through this quickly. So we have the right management interface. Okay, so that should look a little better now. So we show the interface status and we can see that ETH0 is configured and ETH1 is not configured. That's what we want. So before we register this test agent, let's look at the system status. And we can see here the connection status says not registered, test status free, so it's not running current tests. We can see the uptime as well as the time offset and the version. So let's go ahead and register. We don't need IPv6. And this login netrounds.com is if you're using the SaaS solution. And we're not, we're doing on-prem. So let's go ahead and add in the IP address of our control center. And then the email we're going to use. And then we're going to name this test agent as well. And let's go ahead and click OK. And if we get prompted for a password, which we just did, that's a really good sign. That means that we're reaching the control center and that everything's in order. It just wants our password now. So let's go ahead and enter that. And then we're able to select our account. And we see registration was successful. Great. So let's look at the system status. And it's currently showing connecting, and it should show connected or something along those lines if we give it just another minute. And it shows logged in. That's right, it's not connected, it's logged in. So connection status shows logged in. That's what you want to see to make sure registration is complete. And if you have troubles, one thing you can do is go to utilities and select troubleshoot connection. And in our case, everything's working well, so we get the message of connection is working correctly. So we're good. And then we can exit from here. And that is configured correctly with TA1. So let's go ahead and jump to TA2 and get that configured. All right, so here is TA2. Go ahead and log in. I'll run through this quickly since we've already seen everything. Let's go to Configure Management, ETH0, Auto. Select the defaults for all this. I'll select Static. Give it the IP address. Give it a gateway. And then a DNS as well. And nothing for IPv6. Time.google is good. And then we'll register this guy. Remove that default server information. And enter the rest of the information we need. And then our password. Select our account and registration was successful. And then we can show system status. We can see it's connecting, just like with the other one. So we'll just give it just a second. Check it again, and we see it's logged in. Perfect, that's what we want to see. And let's go ahead and exit that, and then we'll jump back to the Paragon Active Assurance web interface and see what we have there. All right, so here is the Paragon Active Assurance web interface, and we are in the test agent's workspace. And things look good here. We can see we have TA1 and TA2, and notice how they have a green circle next to them. And if we look at the legend down here, we can see that's good. It shows that it's ready. If it shows yellow, that means it's in use. Gray means it's offline. So let's go ahead and select TA1. And we can see under interfaces, we have ETH0. It's got an IP address. ETH1 has nothing. And we just need to click on ETH1 to configure it. And then we have bunch of different sections, IPv4, DHCP server, IPv6, VLANs, and stuff like that. And we can set it a bridge, check out the status if we want, and see that it's active. Things look good there. We see there's no address. So let's go ahead and select IPv4 address. Let's select static, and then let's add this in. Okay, 
give it a gateway and a DNS and select OK. And then we need to save it. And you can see here that it shows reconfiguring pending. And when that's done, it'll let you know that if it succeeded or not. And that shouldn't have a problem since we're just simply configuring an IPv4 address with ETH1. We can see the interfaces went offline. And now a configuration has been updated, message pops up. Click OK. And we can see that we have that IP address. That looks good. Great. So let's go ahead and go back to the test agent's workspace. Let's do the same thing with TA2. And let's select the ETH1 interface and then IPv4 address. Configure static interface. Slash 24. Give it a gateway as well. And give it a DNS server information. And then click OK. And again, we need to hit save. You can see we have unsaved changes. And we'll confirm that. And again, it shows reconfiguring pending. You see that in the bottom right hand side. So it's going to go through the exact same process of it reconfiguring the interfaces and then bouncing the interfaces. You can see there shows them offline. That's just bouncing the interfaces as it's reapplying or applying the configuration. We'll select OK. And we can see the interface is configured. So that does bring us to the end of this learning bite. In this learning bite, we demonstrated how to register test agent appliances. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.